Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. So you must have encountered a situation when you are loading a website and it suddenly crashes, right? Behind that problem, it's not only about too many visitors or uh, a lot of traffic in the website. It, sometimes it's about the web server architecture also. Basically, the traditional web servers that are out there, right? So they, they struggle to function properly under heavy load. And there are some fundamental design gaps. That's the reason we are, which we are going to discuss now. To solve all the problems of traditional web server, Nginx came into the picture. So, so in this video, we'll explore what are the bottlenecks of traditional uh, web servers and what are the problems they pose and how Nginx tackles these issues and we'll then uh, deep dive into the internal architecture of Nginx and how it works. So uh, first thing first, let's start by understanding how a traditional web server actually works. Okay? So if you see this architecture, this is the high level architecture of how a traditional web server works. Uh, most legacy web servers like let's say Apache HTTP server use a thread based or process based model. What do you mean by thread based and process based model? Basically each request is handled using a separate process or a separate thread. One prerequisite of this video is that you must have an understanding, deeper understanding of process and threads. So then only I'll suggest you to come and watch this video. It'll be able to understand the concept. So this traditional web servers have few limitations. The first limitations is the blocking architecture that it has. Now, what do you mean by blocking architecture? Now, what, what happens in traditional web server is each incoming request of the client gets assigned to a dedicated thread or a process. So let's assume it's thread for now. All right. So if a request is slow, let's say one user request came and we assigned the request to a particular thread in the application. Let's say we have a single code CPU in our server, just for assumption, which can host three parallel threads at a given point of time. It, it can execute three parallel threads at a given point of time. So if a request is slow, let's say request requires to interact with a database, a database query, let's say takes some time. So the thread remains blocked. This thread one remains blocked until it completes. There are now fewer available threads to handle the incoming request, which leads to slow response times and potential crashes also of the server. Uh, let's say you have got to visited a restaurant. There is only one waiter at the restaurant, right? and the waiter moves to table to table and collects orders. So if at one table the customer order is delayed or the customer takes a lot of time to give the final order, then the other customer has to wait, right? So that's how this traditional web server works. So the second problem with this traditional web server is the high memory and CPU overhead. Now just imagine why. If there are multiple users in interacting with the application, that means more number of users is equal to more number of threads. That means more RAM uses, right? Because each thread has requires its own stack space and ideally it's its 8 MB. So at least 8 MB of stack space it requires and stack where does the stack lie? It, it is a part of the RAM, right? So indirectly, if the number of users increase in the application in the server, the RAM consumption, the resource consumption will also increase as each thread requires its own stack memory. Now the next thing is context switching between the threads consume CPU cycles definitely, right? If you have multiple threads running on the same core, there will be context switching that will happen between the threads, right? So it involves CPU cycles. So that leads to slowing performance. And the third problem in traditional web, web servers are basically it's about poor handling of static pages. So see, traditional web servers are not designed to directly store their files on the RAM and all those things. So web pages which consist HTML, CSS, JavaScript, videos, images, etc. Right? They are not optimized to handle this efficiently because they rely directly on the file system. This waste file system which is a blocking file system I.O. So instead of caching them in the memory, they rely on the disk waste uh, storage system. That's why the handling of the static con content becomes poorer in traditional web servers. So the fourth problem is scaling issue. I mean, if you want to scale traditional web server under a heavy load, let's say your traffic spikes suddenly in your application during a big billion day sale or any Black Friday sale. So this traditional web servers will uh, struggle because the server may crash and become unavailable due to resource exhaustion. because you can easily see that if the number of users are increasing, there is a pressure on the RAM and the CPU of the web server. So, it, so these are some of the problems of our traditional web server. So, but if you think about the modern applications, modern applications demand high performance, scalability, efficiency. They, those are the main goal of your application, right? This is where, as you discussed, Nginx uh, kicks in and the entire architecture, if I go to Nginx, so this entire architecture that you see, right? So this drastically minimizes the resource consumption and maximizes the uh, throughput of the system. So let's break down now how Nginx achieves this extreme scalability using some of the key techniques. If you look at the first part of the Nginx architecture, so what Nginx does is it adopts a master worker ar architecture. Executing multiple tasks simultaneously is known as parallelism, right? So using this parallelism, leveraging this technique of parallelisms, 
and master worker process. What Nginx does is it has a master process. So it does nothing but it reads the Nginx configuration file. And based on the configuration mentioned, it creates mul and manages multiple worker processes. So master process creates multiple worker processes like this. So these are my worker processes. Now what, the, what is the job of this worker process? So this worker process handles client connections independently. Unlike this, I mean, this is also a process that instead of having multiple threads like this, what the engineer's worker does is, uh, they work as a single threaded process. The cool part is each worker process is pinned to a particular dedicated CPU core and that is done for optimizes, optimal utilization. Now, why? You can think why. Why not to have two worker processes on the same CPU core? Again, we will fall into the similar issues. Like if you have multiple processes running on the same CPU core, uh, indirectly will uh, there will be again context switching right between the processes. Then there will be CPU overheads by directly coupling a particular process and tying it to a particular core. Having a one-to-one -one relationship between the process and the core, what Nginx ensures is it doesn't for get into the trouble of context switching because there is only one process running in the CPU core right of Nginx worker, and uh, there is no need of context switching. There is no CPU overhead, and this ensures even distribution of workloads across CPU resources. So just to give you an analogy, uh, imagine that you, you are running a restaurant and you have two chefs. So your chefs are the work worker processes, right? And what you have done, you have basically assigned them different kitchen altogether. Instead of asking both the chefs to work in the same kitchen, which might conflict, right? Let's say one chef is using the utensils and the gas stove, then the other might have to wait. So that's exactly what happens. So instead of giving them the same kitchen, what you did, you gave them two different kitchens. Like chef one will go to kitchen one, chef two will get, go to kitchen two, they will work independently. So that improves their performance and efficiency, right? Now let's just zoom into the worker processes a bit. Now we understood about parallelism, right? Now concurrency, what does the concurrency means? Concurrency is the ability to manage multiple tasks. Let's say we have multiple tasks to perform. Managing multiple tasks at the same time, even if they don't run simultaneously. Managing and running. Managing means how to ensure that all the requests are processed, not necessarily that all the uh, task has to be running at the same time. It's about managing. Concurrency is about management of multiple things. Using the concept of concurrency, Nginx achieves high concurrency using an event-driven model with a non-blocking event loop. Now, when a user request comes to the worker process, the request is added to the worker's event queue. Now, the event loop processes the request asynchronously. The event loop will be picking up the request from this event queue one by one and uh, then uh, processing the request asynchronously and send the response back to the users. So instead of waiting on slow operations like database queries, then file I/O, disk I/O, all those things, the event loop switches to handling other requests. It won't wait on the blocking request or heavy request. So instead of waiting on this, the event loop will process the other request or the non-blocking request and send back the response. Then what happens to this blocking request? You must definitely ask, right? But before going to the blocking request, this non-blocking I/O model, the worker process, ensures that a worker can handle thousands of lakhs of requests simultaneously, even though it runs as a single-threaded process. Okay, what happens to this blocking request or this heavy slow request uh, and queries then? So there are some tasks like database queries, okay, after then uh, file I/O, disk I/O, all those things, basically can block the worker's process. To in order to handle this, what Nginx does is it uses a concept of thread pool. As soon as it detects a blocking request, what the uh, worker process will do, it will transport that request to the task queue inside the thread pool. And in the meantime, the worker process will continue processing the other request in the event queue. Now, once the task is moved to this task queue inside the thread pool, now here they will spin up multiple threads and each thread will be processing the task from this task queue. Once the blocking task is done, I mean, once it is processed, the thread pool will notify the worker and the response will be sent back to the user. So that's how the entire handling of the blocking and non-blocking request happens inside a Nginx worker. So what is the benefit of this then? So with this, the event loop never gets stuck, right? It processes the request uh, in an asynchronous manner and which ensures the low latency and high responsiveness. Now, when it comes to scaling this Nginx circuit and Nginx server, just handling the request is not enough. So it also requires efficient data management, data caching, and data sharing techno, uh, techniques which will minimize redundant processing. Using a simple caching technique, you can serve the request faster. We, know, we all know that, right? If the same request comes, we can easily send us, uh, cache the response and send it to future request if the same request comes in the future. So a simple way to improve performance is caching the response as we understood. However, in a multi-worker process, a traditional idea will be to have a 
single case for each of the worker processes like having a separate case for this process and saving a separate case for this process so this way a problem will be duplicate data storage right if the same request goes to this and goes to this the response will be cached twice same response so in order to handle this what nginx did is they came up with a shared memory zone concept what does it do it allows the workers to you know share the cache data if request comes they can directly cache the response in the shared memory zone so that other worker process can also use the cache to handle the same request in future. The shared memory zone can store let's say session information also or to support sticky session implementation. If you want to persist a user session, you can servers can use the shared memory zone concept and you can then implement rate limiting by tracking the request centrally. I mean, you can track the in incoming request to the worker process in a central memory store and then you can implement rate limiting based on the maybe IP address or uh, number of requests in a given uh, span of time, all those things. So if you want to handle millions of connections in your application efficiently, you must use Nginx in your application. Also, as a, Nginx gives other capabilities like uh, reverse proxy, load balancing. Nginx as a complete package, it becomes a handy tool for the developers to use or the system architects to use. So if you found this video helpful, and interesting and you go to learn something like this video and let's target for 50 likes in this video and we are targeting to reach 3000 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting i create this kind of in-depth tech videos in my channel you can check out my learn out of the box playlist you can click on the icon to explore that you will find a lot of uh, topics like this and you'll find it find them interesting so if you have any questions about whatever we discussed in this video drop them in the comment section i'll be sure to answer them so thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you